my gaff. Uh, yeah. How's it going? Yeah, I'll go with that too. Go good. And Done. it would appear after the last few games that you're the uh, undisputed number one now. Is that how you're seeing it? And uh, I mean, like I mentioned before, every time I come in, I just focus on trying to be the best in training um, and improve myself in every way. Um, and whenever I get the chance on the pitch to, to try and prove um, that I'm the right decision to be playing, um, and that's all I can do. You've got some terrific competition though from, from Cuyvin and Mark. Yeah, definitely. Like you see, even just in training today, the, the quality of the three keepers, we feed really well off each other. Like you said, we're all quite young and we're all still learning, um, and it's a brilliant group to work with. When you look back at the, the last window, how would you assess it? Um, I think it was quite positive in terms of performances. Um, I think the, the results definitely could have gone uh, more our way. I mean, if we keep going the way we're going and putting in these quality performances, uh, I'm sure the results will come. And it was brilliant to see uh, the players like Andrew coming through and uh, making their debuts. Um, and I suppose the belief and the quality that we played with in the games was uh, really promising. Even though the result didn't go our way in the end, the, the performance against Portugal was pretty memorable and, and for you the penalty save, did you get much reaction when you went back to your club? I did, yeah. You have a lot of people asking me what, what it was like, um, but like you said, the performance was um, was outstanding that night. We just didn't get the result, it didn't go our way in the end, but it shows real promise for uh, upcoming games. But back specifically to the penalty against Ronaldo, I mean, you know, had you thought about what you were going to do beforehand? Had you studied him? Uh, yeah, so before every game I look at penalty takers and I spoke to uh, Dean Kiley before the game if it was Ronaldo or Fernandes that was going to take it and um, the different run-ups that they might have and what side I was going to go to depending on, on his run-up and I stuck to my gut and uh, I was able to make the save which was brilliant. And I suppose it particularly uh, impressed your Manchester City colleagues. Yeah, yeah, so it was, uh, it was very nice to be able to do it in front of some of them and um, just, you know, make that even more, a bit special. Well, best of luck for this weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks. Gavin, has uh, things changed for you since those sort of high-profile performances for Ireland? Have you been recognised more? Are, are people judging you differently? Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't really think about that too much. I just try to focus on my own game. And um, I mean, the most important thing after that game was to, to back it up because... Uh, I suppose at that moment, it's, as much as it's special, it doesn't mean anything if you can't go and then put in some performances at your club, so that's what I was uh, most focused on. So I was happy I was able to perform quite well in my recent games. And in terms of the game at the weekend against Azerbaijan, obviously the group has gone, qualification has gone, so what are Ireland playing for? Um, I mean, every time you step on the pitch you play to win, that's the main focus, uh, and for us as a group, uh, I suppose it's to, to show uh, progress from where we've come from. I mean, I, like I said, I think we showed that in the, the previous games we played in the last window. Um, and we're just going to look to build on those performances um, with some of the tactical work we've been doing and with, more importantly, results. You talk about results. The best performances have often been against the top teams and, and disappointing against the teams that arguably you're expected to win, the likes of Luxembourg and and Azerbaijan as well. Have you looked at that as a group and is there a reason behind that you feel? Uh, yeah, we have looked at that and we've mentioned it um, in meetings and we've noticed that when we've had a lot more of the ball we've uh, we've struggled a bit and uh, inside we're trying to rectify that and see how we can you know, improve in games where we have more of the ball and be more of a threat to those oppositions. Without giving too much away, what does that entail then, being better with the ball? Um, I suppose there's some, some tactical stuff, um, but also just bringing that intensity. When you have a lot of the ball and the team's putting 11 men behind the ball, uh, sometimes it can start to get a bit slow and a bit laboured. Uh, and just increasing the t uh, tempo and the intensity, um, I think that's one of the most important things when you have a team that's just looking to sit back and break. And as a keeper, can you almost set the tempo from the back sometimes? Yeah, definitely. That's definitely one of my roles is to to set the tempo and uh, the intensity, not only with what I'm doing on the ball, but also with my voice. Thanks very much. Cool. Thanks, Karen. Hi, Gavin, how are you? Uh, no wins yet in Group A, no competitive win yet under Stephen. Is that winless one a concern for the players at all? Not at all, uh, because I see massive progress uh, over the last few games, and I see where we're going as a group. 
Um, and I feel that's what a lot of the other players think. They, they can see the progress we're making with um, a lot of the young lads that are coming through and how brave we are in terms of playing. And we've just not got rewarded for that. But uh, I'm sure if we continue to play how we have played and if we continue to build on what we've done, the results will come. You're obviously not based here, you're based in the UK, but are you aware of the debate here between people who want Stephen Kenny to continue the job and people who want him uh, to be moved on? And what would your reaction, what would your, your advice to be to those people who say he should be removed from the job? Um, no, I wouldn't be too aware of, you know, what the opinions are of other people, but I think the most important thing is to look at us as a group, look at the recent games we've played, uh, look at the game against Portugal, the game against Serbia, um, look at the amount of young players that have been integrated into the squad um, and this isn't going to be a short or quick fix, it's not going to be a temporary solution, this is for a long term plan uh, to get us into a position where all these young lads will be able to break through into this team and will be able to challenge the best teams in the world, so that's, that's the aim. And just finally, you know, just looking back as you reviewed the, the previous game against Azerbaijan, what happened the last day, what did you need to rectify to win the next day? Um, so just obviously we've only been in a day now, we've, we've briefly spoken about that. Um, there's some tactical stuff that we can work on uh, and we've been speaking about that within the group. Um, but like I mentioned before with the intensity and aggression of the press, um, but also when we have the ball, I think if we perform anywhere near the levels um, we played against Portugal and Serbia, um, the results should go our way. Just a couple of questions each from, for the live section. Gavin, if you want to continue that. Gavin, you're evidently a pretty confident guy, but at the age of 19, did you ever think that a regular senior Irish international career would be happening for you this quickly? Uh, I mean, it was always a hope and an aspiration. Um, and now that it's happening, you know, I don't even think about it like that. I think about what's, what's the next goal, um, what's the next level I can get to. And I just continue to take things day by day, training session by training session, match by match, uh, and trying to improve every day, really. Being an Ireland's regular goalkeeper, has it changed you at all, as either a person or a footballer? Um, possibly just gives me that little bit of recognition for all the hard work I've put in, which is good. Uh, but it gives me just that taste for success and how I want to get to a, a next level even quicker. And how I can work harder to get to that next level, like I said. And just last thing, we now slightly more tangibly. We, we saw the defence and the rest of the Irish team probably pass back to you and use your distribution a little bit more in the last window compared to March. Was that something that the manager had talked about, about using your distribution as, a, as an asset for the rest of the team? Um, I don't think it was a major talking point, but um, I suppose when you're playing against teams um, that we were playing against Portugal and Serbia and they're such high pressing teams um, and I was comfortable with the ball, I think the players recognised that and they could just use me as an outlet, which I was more than happy to do. Damien, please. Kevin, there's obviously a huge step from, from League One to international football, but how has your league football prepared you for, for what you first did in the national level? Um, there is a, there's a huge difference, but I think if you approach all of the games in the same way, it doesn't make a massive difference. Uh, if I approach every league game with the same intensity and the same mindset that I'd approach every international game. Um, and I think that's just the mentality of wanting to win, to be the best on the pitch, uh, to play with intensity and a great temperament. And I think if you play with that mentality, no matter what level you're playing at, um, you'll be one step in the right direction. And just going back to the Ronaldo penalty, I mean, everybody's been talking about How often has it come through your mind since the last week? Um, I don't think about it too much, but like you said, there's a lot of people who bring it up every now and again, and it's a nice, nice thing to be able to go back to. Um, but I just want to kick on and I want to have another moment like that. And Ed, just stand the live section. Kevin, how are you doing? Uh, look, just I suppose just um, following your performances for in the green jersey over the last uh, window. Um, did you have a conversation with Manchester City about you know that performance and whether? Are they in this monitoring your situation? Will they be able to call you back, or are you, uh, folk, are you uh, sort of uh, contracted support for the for the full season? Uh, I mean, the only conversations I would have had uh, after that last window was with Jabby. He's the goalkeeper coach with the first team at City, and uh, I speak to him very regularly after every match. And the conversations just would have been in terms of 
like a tactical breakdown of the game and what I could what I done well, what I could have done better and how to improve. There was no no conversations about anything else other than what I did on the pitch. So no I'm I'm very much just focused on what I'm doing at the moment, it's just taking it game by game and I'm not, not really thinking about anything else other than that. It, it's obvious then also just the players and the manager are all sort of focused now towards building for Euro 2024. Uh, would the players you think um, be more comfortable to know if, if the manager is in, in place for those for that full campaign and you know, so that you can also uh, start really beginning that journey together? Um, I mean, from the players' point of view, like we're not even really thinking about that. Like so we're just thinking about the next game and. Um, we're taking all the information that we're getting from the manager and Keith and Anthony, and it's 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 really been brilliant. Um, and like I said before, we've seen the the progress that we've been making, and we're just going to look to continue to build on that um, and take it game by game. Because the most important thing for us is now on Saturday focusing on that game. We're not thinking uh, any further ahead of that. So. Okay, we're just going to start the embargoed section now. That's the way we just run out of time in the live section. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, if you want to ask a question in the embargo section, it is 11 p.m. to not the embargo. Gavin, if you want to pick up something. Gavin, how are you doing? Um, it, just looking at yourself and Queenie, you played 900 minutes. You, Mark, played 900 minutes this season. He's only played 90. You know, obviously, there's a huge benefit of you being on the course, and there's a huge benefit of him sitting on the middle of the bench. But what's your feeling of what's the best way for so you get uh, international caps? Like, is it Championship League One or Premiership bench? So what's, your, what's your take on it all? Um, my opinion was always game time was the most important thing. That's why I went on loan to Rochdale and now gone on loan to Portsmouth. Um, I'm 100 percent sure that I wouldn't be anywhere near the position I am now without having that backing of games, having that experience, and um, really that this confidence just because of the amount of games I've I've got under my belt. And um, so for me, in my opinion, uh, playing games is the most important thing. And, and just in a more general, on the same topic, not you, you can see why you're a course, but you can see why the previous is a good book. You see Callum Robinson doing so well. So many Irish players are really thriving in the championship, yet guys who are equally skilled are really struggling for the premiership, and it's Jeff Henry who go on and on right through the squad. What, what, in your view, what's the best fit for this, this squad at the moment? Is it if you playing top, like, promotion, in top level championship, or what's, what's the level that you'd like to see most of playing? Um, you understand it's quite difficult. You know? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I suppose it's it's really down to the players. Um, you know, different players have different aspirations and goals. Um, you know, it can be difficult for some players to be to be playing like you said in the Premier League and struggling a bit uh, versus some players who are playing in the Championship and really thriving. Um, but at the end of the day, it's down to those players if they if they believe they're good enough to step up and play in the Premier League. You know, all credit to them. Um, but <coughs> I, my personal opinion is you should always try and play at the highest level as you can. Philip, please. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gavin. Um, Ederson's first half pass yesterday uh, put Foden in behind Milner. It was something special. I'm sure you watched it. And you approved of it. Uh, have you got that in your locker? Um, I'm working towards it. Definitely. I mean. Uh, He's definitely he's a, he's a special goalkeeper. He's changed uh, the way the game's being played, and I definitely take a lot of um, learning from the way he plays. Uh, obviously, I want to have my own my own build, um, but definitely with the way he's changed modern goalkeeping, I think there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of positives that I can take from his game and try to add to mine. And a follow up if I may. I know you're talking with the Man City coach, Golden Road regularly. Do you have much interaction with Ederson as a matter of interest? Um, I wouldn't have any interaction other than when I'm in training with them. Um, so no, it's just just with Javi, the goalkeeper coach. Thank you. Anyone? No, no. Well, we'll go again. John, John. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, I'm just uh, starting to follow up on Gavin's question just about the trajectory of goalkeepers. Like you've made it very clear that you want to be Man City's number one, um, and you're trying to balance that about getting games. Like, are you prepared sort of to go into a phase of your career a bit like where Queen is, where you have to be on the bench at the likes of Man City and be patient and not play games, maybe play League Cup games only for a season or so? Yeah, I suppose that's that's the difficult um, possible next step to my career where I have to make a decision there. Um, I've not made a decision on that yet, um, 
but my priority will always be to try and get as many games as I can. Um, because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't want to be sitting on a bench. I want to be out playing week in, week out if possible. Um, but if if the best thing for me is to be in and around the squad, uh, learning every day, training with Javi, if that's my best opportunity to become a Manchester City's number one, uh, I'll have to consider it in the future, yeah. And, and just link to that, there's also the criteria then your international place in that it's very clear you're, you have this now ahead of the lads because you're playing every week, but that might be the case. Yeah, so that that's what my reasoning will be for, for going on loan. You know, you get a chance every week to prove yourself. Um, and to be in the manager's eye and the goalkeeper coach's eye for them to see it, uh, to continue to back up performances. Um, so, like I said, I have to make that decision further down the line. Um, but my priority will always be to try and play week in, week out, wherever I am. We'll finish up with Paul Lennon. Gavin, then, after the Portugal game, Stephen Kenny said that there were times maybe when you and the defence shouldn't play out from the back. And that maybe you know you you might have to alter your tactics. Has he spoken to you about that subsequently before the Azerbaijan game or before the uh, Serbia game? But you might need to knock it long or longer at times. Yeah, so we would have had like a tactical debrief after the game, and yeah, so there was times where the pressure was quite high. You know, you're playing away from home against a really top opposition, and sometimes you just need to take a bit of pressure off the team by like you said, playing a bit longer or playing into areas where you might have a bit more of an overload. Um, but yeah, that comes, that's, that's the type of thing we're learning and we're, we're growing as a group, you know, we're, we're trying to play this new, more brave brand of football, but also you have to get the balance between playing short and, you know, drawing on pressure versus um, creating too much pressure from yourself. So you need to just get that fine balance. Okay, guys, thanks. Bring David two lads in immediately, right?